Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I wanna make another quick video talking about some more Visual Studio productivity tips. And this one I'm specifically gonna talk about code snippets. And if you're wondering what code snippets are, it's basically this right here. So if you're wondering how I just generated that property, keep watching the video. So you can see here that I didn't actually type all that out. All I did was type in the keyword prop and then hit the tab key twice. So prop, tab, tab. And you can see that I just generated a property on this class. And it's really powerful because you can also type in prop full and tab, tab, and it'll generate a private field with a public property with get and set accessors. And that's super helpful because a lot of the times, you know, you don't wanna just key this out manually. You just wanna have a shortcut and, you know, generate a property and then you can change the type and then you can change um, the name of it and you can see how that can be really fast so that's really the power of what code snippets are and there's a lot of them too at your disposal uh, by default in Visual Studio so if you go to this documentation here provided by Microsoft you can see a lot of um, the default code snippets that come with Visual Studio so you can see here, uh, I'm not going to go through all these, but we were using the prop and prop full code snippets. Um, but you can see there's a lot of them. So there's a lot of them that are like already provided for you for a lot of basic, you know, things that you're going to be using on a day to day basis. So you have your try, you have uh, using, you have a switch statement, man, you got a lot of them here. You got for loop. Uh, do while constructor you have a lot of them and they're you know they come right out of the box in Visual Studio 2019 um, and it <laughs> man it took me forever to find out what these were technically called like I use them but I didn't know like what what they were called and it's not inherently obvious where this documentation is for this um, so I'm gonna link this in the description so if you want if you want to go check this out definitely go do that um, so if you're ever in a file like this, I'm just in this like fake service class I made here. Um, so you can see we obviously generated a property like that. And if we need to add a constructor, we can do the CTOR tab tab. We made a constructor. If we need a try block, we can hit try tab tab. We, we, we are in a try block. If we need to do an if statement, we can do if tab tab. We got our if statement. Um, what was another one here? We can do a switch statement, I think, if we type in switch. Yeah, cool. Okay. Man, I, I was low-key hoping like that this would include the uh, case syntax. Because I, for whatever reason, I always forget how to structure switch statements. If it, um, if it spec'd it out like this, that'd be pretty cool. I'm sure you can, you can override... Uh, maybe not override, but you can probably make your own. Um, but I'm probably not going to do that. I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't use the switch statement that often to justify that. And I think that was all, at least all the ones I remember that I just saw. Anyway, if you want to go through the list, you can definitely check this out. Um, but for me personally, I use I use this one all the time. Prop tab tab. That one's just is super helpful, and I've gotten in the habit of using it. And once you get in the habit of using it, it's man, you're you're gonna have a hard time not using it. And I've actually seen, you know, when I'm in other uh, editors, IDEs, whatever it is, I'll actually just instinctively type in prop, and then do it like that. And one time I was actually um, doing like this, like I forget what it was. I was doing some kind of interview type question. And I had to write a for loop. And I was so used to, uh, I'll show you. I was so used to typing in for like this. And then it would generate the for loop for me. And I was so used to that. I literally forgot how to write a for loop. And I was sitting there with this, with my cursor, sitting, <laughs> trying to remember what to type in. I'm like, oh no, do I type in like var... I and then I was I was stumbling so bad and needless to say I did not get another <laughs> interview on that 
Um, so there is some downside potentially if you get into such a habit of using these code snippets that you forget basic syntax. Uh, but, you know, let's just assume that you're not going to do that <laughs> um, because they're really, really powerful and they're definitely going to speed up your development um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I know they do for me. And so hopefully that this video uh, helped you out. Hopefully that um, this made you aware of what code snippets are and hopefully that you make good use of them. And, and if you're interested in making your own code snippets, go check that out and let me know in the comments if you find any useful ones that you made. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Really appreciate it and have a good one.